YouTube buzz it going the goat house is back and today I'm ranking every NFL starting quarterback from 32 to 1 based on the 2020 regular season that that's it not going into a new year not based on their entire career 2020 regular season quarterback rankings using the quarterback from each team that started the most games as well not who finished it um, so wanted everyone to kind of have an even sample size as best we could here I'm going to get ripped in this one in the comments. I'm looking forward to that. You can follow us on Twitter. You can let me have it on there if you want. Um, playoffs going on right now. We're on We're on to the divisional round. We got full coverage for that. Picks on Tuesday night. Score predictions Wednesday. Plenty more. Uh, Off-season content's getting going as well. We have a recent mock draft up. So check it out. Follow that Twitter. Uh, link in the description in the comments for anything that you may need. We got polls on that sided app. As you see below me, you can win Amazon gift card just by participating. Subscribe if you're new, full NFL coverage. Right before the quarterback, that is the quarterback rankings. All right, uh, really quick, we got our Twitter polls going on for each of the uh, divisional round matchups. You guys are voting, and you guys have a say for who gets the fan vote in the weekly picks. Now, we can, there's a link in the description for that, at Godel's NFL. Give us a follow, talking during live games. Now, we already, we already saw it, but we're going to see it again here. Sam Darnold, lucky number 32. He was 29 when we ranked halfway through the season. I think it was a week after halfway through the season. He was 29, but he was 29 out of 29. We didn't rank every quarterback because there was some that were just kind of getting thrown in there. So he still last. I mean, he had some decent games here and there, but it was you know games where he didn't really play like the worst quarterback in the NFL. He played kind of close to it, so people were kind of getting all hype about that. It's you know It kind of explains itself right there. Overall, yeah, he has not been good. Can't make those explosive plays, turns the ball over, can't really read defenses, so uh, the Jets will be looking for their franchise quarterback here very soon. But Cam Newton at 31, it's kind of surprising to see Cam Newton down here. He was 26, but again, we ranked 29 um, uh, last time around, a week after half with this, you know, it was week 9 or 10, somewhere around there. Um, yeah, and Cam didn't throw the ball well. You can see, ever since that injury, was it two years ago, that shoulder injury, he's just never right, you know. It looks like he's about to throw the ball a mile and it goes about four yards and he's confused you know you feel really bad a lot of that popped up just couldn't really get going in the passing game you know especially downfield just couldn't really do it his running game pretty much helps him uh from being 32 but not a good season there Nick Mullins at 30 Nick Mullins pretty productive you know in terms of yardage uh, but I, you know, I think he made some mistakes in some big time moments and, uh, you know, you kind of felt that the 49ers could really make a playoff push, but because the inconsistency and, you know, he didn't play as many games as a lot of these guys. So that hurts, hurts him as well. Cause this is based on the 2020 season, but I'm at 30, he was ranked at 28 last time. He actually might, you know, in terms of production, he probably got better in the second half of the season, but. Uh, again, we ranked. He was second to last last time. Now he's third to last. Alex Smith at 29. You know there was a pretty good split in how much quarterbacks played for uh, Washington, mainly Smith and Dwayne Haskins. Um, Smith didn't play all that well. Defense won games. You know he was checking the ball down a lot. And you know it's one thing if you're checking the ball down a lot, but you're still pretty you know safe with the ball, still making the big plays in the right moments. Yeah, you'd be ranked higher, but he was also turning the ball over. Um, he came in there, you know, what he was able to do was ridiculous. You know, never thought he'd be able to do it. So, you know, respect, obviously. And he helped the team get to the playoffs. But, uh, you know, in terms of the we're ranking just quarterbacks, uh, I'm ranking at 29. Carson Wentz played majority of the games and snaps for the Eagles. Jalen Hurts came in and looked night and day, just, just better. Playing, not that he was great, but he just looked better. But, again, Carson Wentz played majority of the games, majority of the snaps. Get him at 28. It's pretty pretty rough year for him. I, I mean, all the way across the board, um, you know, taking sacks, just holding on to the ball way too long, just not being able to understand pressure, you know, pressure coming right at him on blitzes, not being able to pick it up. Way off target on throws, throwing balls up for grabs, um, uh, up for grabs, you know, and um, he wasn't, you know, it's just surprising how, you know, the, the downfield ball usually is pretty good for him even when he's a little off, but he just was under-throwing those. So just a weird year for him. It was just, Pretty bad. It's just weird seeing him at 28. Daniel Jones at 27. Um, yeah, he had some games where he was pretty productive. Helped the Giants, uh, you know, make a push there at the end. You know, they beat the Cowboys last game of the year. This was a tough one to rank because all of a sudden they kind of made him into a game manager. And that, you know, it's a, it's a debate. Would you rather have a guy that's going to 
make those big time plays, but also turn the ball over? Would you rather have a guy that's gonna be a game manager, but he's not doing enough? But that kind of sums up Daniel Jones. You know, maybe just not good enough early in his career, but maybe just not good enough because they either gotta make him a game manager, him do not do much at all, or he can have those big plays, but he's gonna turn the ball over and might cost you a bit. So. Too many turnovers at the same time. It's kind of just back and forth on what type of quarterback he is. So he's at 27. Gardner Minshew at 26. Gardner Minshew actually played. I thought he actually played better than where I thought he would be. You know, I thought he'd be probably be at the bottom. Um, you know, more of a game manager type. You know, can't really make those big plays downfield. Um, he's not the answer, of course, for the Jaguars. And we'll see them take a quarterback first overall. But he was definitely their best quarterback this year, not saying much. And he, he played okay, you know, just not playing a bunch of games in the second half of the season. Made him go down from 23 to 26, but it didn't drop that much just because of his production and his you know play was just better than the guys below him here. So the 26, moving on to the next group. Mitchell Trubisky comes in at number 25. And tough one to rank, too, because he really had, you know, three, four solid games kind of being a game manager at the same time. Um, you know, they, they switched their scheme up a little bit. He was a little better, but, you know, a little easier for him. Um, you know, other than that, yeah, not the best year, but did have a big gap of missing games, uh, you know, with Foles being in there. So Trubisky would come in at 25, not towards the bottom where we kind of expected him. Where, you know, he wasn't ranked last time because we ranked Foles. Um, but, yeah, Trubisky will be 25 for now. Had, you know, had a little bit of a stretch there where he was playing maybe a little better than expected. Drew Locke at 24, and this brings up one of those, and he moved up three spots. He did play a little better in the second half. This kind of brings up a debate. Would you want, do you want, would you rather have that guy that that can make those big plays because he has that arm and he can win a game or get those points up on the board because he has that big play ability, but you're going to suffer, you're going to surrender some turnovers there at the same time. Um, I thought he did a little better job of making more explosive plays, maybe limiting turnovers a little bit more in the second half of the year. So that's why he went up. Um, I, I still don't know if he's really the answer. I think you can get better. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty quick to decide if a quarterback's the guy or not, you know, and it's mainly because the quarterback's the most important position in football. And, um, if you want to win a Super Bowl in today's era, you're going to need a really good one. I don't think Drew Locke's going to win a Super Bowl. Yes, he can get better. Yes, he has that big play potential. We'll see. But he'll, he'll moved up a little bit since around halfway of the year. Andy Dalton actually picked it up. He actually played. He wasn't ranked. He was kind of in the to-be-determined uh, section that I had while I ranked 29 because we knew he was going to be the start of the rest of the year. Um, he actually picked it up. He actually played pretty well, I, you know, I thought. You know, he uh, – I mean, the last throw he made at the end of the Giants game wasn't too good, but – he was starting to get, you know, his groove, you know, groove going there. He's starting to make some good throws and put the Cowboys in games. They went a little bit of winning streak. He's playing solid ball, actually. Um, and it shouldn't really, it really shouldn't be that much of a surprise. Andy Dalton's been a starter for that long, you know. But you know how weak that, you know, how beat up that offense line was. You maybe expect him a little lower, but yeah, he played all right. Teddy Bridgewater uh, was 15, ended up 22, so he went down quite a bit. Um, he's pretty much hanging on to, yeah, his his 15, you know, the first half of the year. Uh, play because it was pretty 15 is pretty damn good there's a there's a cutoff where you know these guys are pretty damn good and these guys you know kind of stink you know um and he played very well the first half of the year and he very played very poorly the second half that was surprising how bad he played the second half of the year uh he got hurt somewhere in there maybe maybe that that affected him I think it was going into the Vikings game and that's where it really went downhill so I mean one extreme to another like he played he played almost better than we expected the first half of the year and then worse, uh, way worse second half of the year. So he moved down quite a bit. Was at seven spots, moved down quite a bit. Um, you know, if the, if he played the way he did in the second half of the year, the whole year, he'd be worse than 22. So he's still, it's the, it's the whole regular season as a whole. So he's still kind of hanging on to that a little bit. Tua Tonga Vailoa at 21 wasn't ranked, was in that to be determined section because that was right when he was coming in. Uh, he helped the Dolphins win games. You know, maybe he was more of a game manager, did use his legs a little bit. Um, I mean, you know, he, he played pretty well, you know, I kind of, I think people kind of want to rank him lower just because it looked like Fitzpatrick was better, which he might've been probably, um, you know, in the system, but that doesn't mean Tua was bad or anything, you know, he's bad in the Bills game, but, uh, you know, I thought he played, you know, I thought he played pretty well, some promise there. And I thought he was better than some of these quarterbacks that ranked, you know, below him, but not the toughest company down here. Uh, next group of quarterbacks, Joe Burrow at 20. So Joe Burrow missed a chunk of the season because, uh, the unfortunate ACL injury that's got that's got to hurt. You know, Bengals fans, you finally got your guy. I mean, there's still a bright future, obviously, but he's still ranked ahead of a lot of these guys that played more, just because those guys are, 
you know, on the weaker side of the quarterbacks, and Joe Burrow was having a pretty damn good season given the circumstances as well. But he does go from 14 to 20. Um, you'd think playing that, you know, the lack of games he played, you'd be lower. But again, those quarterbacks down there, I just don't see any reason to rank him over Joe Burrow, even with the smaller sample size. Hey, Jared Goff was 19 before. He's 19 still. Kind of talk about consistency. An inconsistent quarterback that is consistent in this rankings. You know, there's, there's games where he'll look very good. Like, okay, it's the Jared Goff we thought there would be. He kind of, over the course of his career, he kind of had those games, you know. Uh, and, you know, Cardinals game, you know, not the last Cardinals game. The Cardinals game, he didn't play in the last Cardinals game. But, the, you know, one, the first Cardinals game, I think he was, he had a really good game. That's just one example. And he has those games where he kind of costs the team. He just turns the ball over, you know, Niners game. Um, games like that, maybe the Jets game, he wasn't all that terrible. But, um so he's consistently inconsistent, 19, 19. Big Ben dropped big time. Number eight, start Darius playing very well, and, uh, you know, they were undefeated, so I guess that plays a small part at least, And uh, but then he went downhill. You know, teams started to figure out that he didn't have the deep ball anymore. He, you know, rarely was, rarely had success throwing deep. Second half of the year, there was really only, you know, the Colts game in the second half of that game was really the only game where he kind of got going downfield. Um, so he was pretty limited to just a small ball game and teams started to figure that out and he had a pretty rough uh, second half of the year. So he dropped from 8 to 18. That's a, that's a pretty big drop there, uh, down 10 spots. Matt Ryan, <clears throat> Matt Ryan, I'm not a big Matt Ryan guy this year. I'm not 2020, I'm not a big Matt Ryan guy. From 12 to 17, production is there. Does he have the arm to throw downfield still at his age? He does. Sure, that's great. Um, but just uh, just a big decline if you if you watch him if you're not a stat if you're a stat watcher probably wondering why he's 17 but if you actually watch him um, he was hurting his team quite a bit uh, his, he, his offense line game protection he held the ball way too long he stepped into way too many sacks he took way too many sacks he couldn't escape pressure he never really was an escape pressure type of guy just a pocket passer uh, but he really wasn't that good at that you know again he had the arm. But uh, what really wasn't good at that. But if he had, to, you know, even there wasn't a chance he can escape pressure, really. So, um, and you know, I, you know, I know Julio missed a lot of games, but I still thought he had the weapons. And the defense started to play. Defense got really good, and they had, they were in position to win a lot of these games. And he just couldn't clutch up. He couldn't do that. And him, really, him taking sacks and not getting the ball out really hurt them a lot of times. And he had. He had some bad turnovers. You know, he didn't have as many turnovers as some of these other guys, but he had some crucial bad ones and bad moments. So I saw, a, you know, not usually when you see a veteran quarterback like this declining, it's usually the arm talent. You know, he thinks he's throwing it this far, but it's not going that far. He doesn't really have that. Maybe sometimes in the out. I remember the Chargers game. You know, the Chargers game where he had a couple bad turnovers. Maybe, you know, trying to hit those outs. Maybe he was maybe a little bit off on those. Those were pretty bad. Uh, but mainly the arm talent's there. It's just... Yeah, he just can't handle pressure anymore, but it's really not. He was, like, instantly pressured, so I was not happy with how Matt Ryan played. And Drew Brees, um, you know, missed four games as well. He'd be ranked much higher. He was nine before, so can't really judge, I guess, Drew Brees on that drop from nine to 16. Just missed some games there. Uh, and the Saints are rolling. You know, they can roll with and without him. Um, you know, I think if he didn't get hurt, he'd be well inside the top ten probably. He's still 16, and there's some really other, other good quarterbacks here, so that just kind of – Shows, you know, uh, Drew Brees, you know, missing four games and still number 16, you know, middle middle of the group there missing those games. I mean, if you know, even when he played, he played well, kind of just kind of a game manager type of guy, but went out and won games as well. You know, um, you see the deep ball starting to decline a little bit at his age. He was you would expect to. Uh, but, yeah, if he, would, if he wouldn't have missed any games there, he'd be he'd probably be around, you know, just inside, just inside the top, you know, right around that nine where he was right around there. Uh, next group of guys, Phillip Rivers at 15. Phillip Rivers started to pick it up in the second half of the year. Um, you know, he threw for a lot of yards. He was throwing up. He was getting the deep ball going better than people expected him. Did have some turnovers here and there, but maybe not not as many as we maybe we expected him to have, you know, given uh, what he did with the Chargers last year, you know. So second half was better. He went from 21 to 15. That was good. I do think he relied on the run game working, you know, whenever the run game wasn't working or they had to come back or – you know they had they were kind of forcing passes. That's he, that's where he wasn't that great, and that's kind of where his knock is. So he did rely on the run game. A lot of quarterbacks do though. But overall, 15 is a good rank. Uh, moved up. Derek Carr dropped down. It's kind of like deja vu. It's every year with Derek Carr. He goes from an incredible rank, number seven, uh, and then the second half of the year he drops down. It feels like a thing for him. Um, overall, I thought he had a pretty good season. 14 is a pretty good rank. 
Um, you know, but they're in position. They kind of controlled their destiny. They're in position to make the playoffs. And really, you know, mainly on the defense, but a collection of things. You know, Derek Carter just wasn't as good as he was in the first half of the year. I think he got, like, too conservative. He th- you start to see him throwing the ball away in, in, in situations where he should not throw the ball away. Um, you know, not too good in the red zone at, at times. Not that he was terrible, but just the lack of execution and, you know, just – other guys getting better as season. Most guys get better as season goes on. You know, look at Rivers, look at Stafford, Mayfield. You know, it's just kind of a trend every year. And for some reason, Carr just doesn't feel as good in the first half of the year. Still, he was accurate quarterback. It's, it's the first half of the year, I love Derek Carr's game. I had him at seven. Dropped down, no. Kyler Murray dropped down just as much there. Went from six to 13. Um, reality is he struggled as a passer in the second half of the year. Yeah, um, you know, he probably he struggled more than a guy like Derek Carr. I think Murray... Uh, having a more big playability, more with his legs, I you know, keep him ahead of him and you know, dropping down the same amount at 13. But reality is, in the second half, I know a lot of people are Kyler Murray fans. I am for the future, uh, but I think people aren't realizing, you know, he was a poor passer in the second half. He, you know, you know, people. The blame is at Kingsbury. He deserves a lot of blame, but nobody wants to blame Murray with some of the throws he was making. The footwork is is, is he's got to work on it in terms of a passer. It was very sloppy. I there, this. Uh, it happened with Garoppolo seemed to be a guy in the past where I would do this. I can, you know, I watched the games live and I could see by his footwork interception coming and I would predict interceptions it was like weird, but I would do it. And Murray was the guy this year before he let go of the ball based on footwork. I'm like interception end up being, I can't believe how many times I did it, you know, in crucial moments of games too. So he, he's got a bit, he's actually got a, you know, he's got that strong arm, that big playability can throw on the run, but you know. He's got to relax. He's got he got a little bit of ways to go as a passer, but he's got so much potential, um, and his running ability keeps him up there. But the Cardinals were disappointed. You know, I felt like they were the seventh best team in the NFC. They should have got there, uh, and it's not just Murray's fault. I'm not saying that, but he is a, he's part of the blame. But 13, 13 is a good rank, so we don't want to rip him too much. I just wish he stayed at just like Derek Carr. I just wish he kept playing like that. You know. Play at that level. Stafford boosted up quite a bit at 17. He was not playing good early in the year. Uh, there was less explosive plays than we're used to. Still had him. Uh, was turning the ball over a little bit. Nothing crazy. Uh, took a lot of sacks. Just could not escape him. And that's where I was kind of like, this might be the end of the road for Stafford. I've been saying all year, you know, the guys that, the quarterbacks that great arm, their pocket, you know, pocket passing quarterbacks. You know, they um, they might be dying. You know, they might be dying in today's NFL because you got to be able to escape pressure. In the second half, he started doing it a, a little more, but he started making those big-time Stafford throws downfield. You know, he still it's even though he didn't throw a lot of interceptions, he still kind of had, you know, ones pop up at kind of bad times in the red zone maybe, uh, crucial moments if I did nitpick, nitpick here. But goes from 17 to 12. He's still got that arm. You know, beautiful. I remember that play in the Bears game the second time I played him. I still can't get over that. Bomb, I think it was a Cephas. That was one of the best throws in the NFL season. Uh, just more consistent of that. You know, if he can escape more pressure, if he can stay healthy, you know, he keeps getting beat up a little bit, tries to play through a tough guy. Um, you know, so, but he's going to come at 12. 12 is a good rank. Baker Mayfield, I boosted from 18 to 11. I thought he had a really good season. You know, he didn't throw for a ton of yards. He, he did rely on the run game a little bit, but he always executed, you know, when he needed to, I thought. You know, he used his legs when he needed to. Um, you know, he made some really big throws on the run in big games. You know, he helped his team win game, uh, you know, win games, get to the playoffs. I mean, nobody was supposed to get this Browns team out, out of where they were at. And it's a, it's a collective effort from a lot of guys, but Baker Mayfield did, did the impossible almost. And, and, you know, being the quarterback of that team, uh, you know, deserves a lot of respect. I thought he played great first year playing in this, you know, play action type of offense, I thought he looked good. You know, he's never really been a huge play action guy, you know, playing under Lincoln Riley, you know, playing over under a couple different guys there and I thought he did a really good job. It's an offense that does kind of simplify it for for the quarterback a little bit, but you got to be able to execute. And I thought he executed in big moments. So, he comes in at number 11 uh, from 18 to 11. Uh, we got Kirk Cousins at number 10. I know people are probably going to give it to me for that, but if you didn't watch Kirk Cousins, I mean, then that that'll explain a lot. Um, he ranked 20 in the halfway through the season and bumped all the way up to 10. So you see the second half of the season. Uh, he started. He was probably the first few games, four or five games, he was playing pretty bad. He was playing – he would have actually more explosive plays 
than he normally would, but he would also turn the ball over way more than he normally would. So we're about at week five, and he's got 11 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. He ends up with 35 and 13, and I'm not really just going off. I mean, that's pretty ridiculous, but I'm not just going off stats if you watch them. Uh, Kirk Cousins was was making a lot of these explosive plays, doing some big things, a big reason why Jefferson was a- able to do that much, you know, t- uh, Thielen, excuse me, I was able to do you know a whole bunch, and they were. It didn't for the first time in a long time. It felt like the Vikings weren't like just a run team. You know, it felt more than that. And credit goes to Cousins. And what was my knock on him halfway the season? Why I was like, I'm pretty much done at, on Cousins. Like, sure he can play. He's definitely worthy of a starting quarterback. You know, number twenty, pretty decent, but. It, just like you know, I was talking about the other guys. He's kind of just a pocket passing quarterback, and he can't really escape, and he can't. He's not using his legs, and he kind of did at Washington. So I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of done with him in this era. I don't. He must have watched and listened to me or something because he just guy just this guy just started running. He just started escaping pressure in the fight, and he was pressured more than anybody in this. While he was playing his best football of his career, he was pressured more than anybody in the NFL. Pretty ridiculous. So he was using his legs, making big time throws, throws on the run. Um, so I don't, in reality of it, the Viking, it's just, that's kind of why it's sad they didn't make the playoffs because they were the fourth offense in yardage. They were that good of an offense and a lot of credit to Kirk Cousins. So I thought he played extremely well. You know, if he played like that the whole year, we'd be, it's tough to pass some of these guys ahead of him, but he'd be in that range. So I thought he had a really good year as a whole, but they did not make the playoffs and it actually wasn't his fault. Uh, but that was an unfortunate Justin Herbert, the Oregon rookie on the chargers comes in at number nine. Who would have thought he was 13. The first First part. Uh, second half of the year, he did actually have more whole games where he didn't play as good. couple of them. Patriots game maybe stands out. Um, but he was going out and winning games. You know, earlier in the year, he was surprising and playing ridiculous. He, in good games as a whole, he would have, you know, kind of a bad turnover late in the year. I thought he, late in the game, I thought he would eliminated that as, as the year went on. And, um, you know, just, just how much he can do. You know, every part, you know, some quarterbacks – play small ball. Some quarterbacks have the downfield game. Some quarterbacks can move, some can't. He has like complete the completeness to his game and that's just as a rookie, a guy that was supposed to be kind of a raw prospect because um, you know, it felt like a guy that was kind of in his own head, you know, lacking a little confidence and that completely disappeared. Uh ridiculous year, uh rookie quarterback at number nine, you know, insane. Lamar Jackson goes from 16 to eight. His running ability definitely plays a big part of this. He went out there and stepped up and won the Ravens games. Uh, the Ravens game, um, game after game there. And you see him in the Browns game. He comes off the game. It was a pretty ridiculous game. And you see how much, how worse, how much worse the Ravens get without him. And he comes back in, just wins the game just like that. See how value is valuable he is. You talk about one of the most valuable players in all of football. It's Lamar Jackson. Uh, and he was starting to hit some big time throws as well on the run making some ridiculous throws ridiculous reading the defense you know people want to get on him as a passer um I think people get on get on him way too much you know I, th- I really think so I think he can throw you know he, he's not going to be able he doesn't have a Herbert you know sh- arm strength not too far I mean Jackson's got more strength than you give him credit for but you know maybe he doesn't have the accuracy of the who we're going to see at the top some of those guys but you know he's definitely one of the more valuable players in football, so that's why he's number eight. Uh, Ryan Tannehill was five, went to seven. I don't really think he got worse. I think some other guys just got a lot better. Um, you know, so he, he had a really good year. He had a really good year. Unfortunate, um, you know, losing to Lamar Jackson in the playoffs. Uh, this is based off the regular season, though. And I mean, we've only played one playoff game, anyways. But uh, yeah, I thought he had a really good year. Even running, I mean, adding that running game to his game was, was significant. I wish they would again. I wish they would use that more in the playoffs because he was very good at it. Threw teams off. Uh, but yeah, really good at throwing the deep sideline ball. Very accurate. Big play ability. So a lot more than what people give him credit for going into this year. So pretty impressed to see him. Uh, up at seven, Tom Brady climbed up. He was at eleven, had some inconsistencies. You know, one game, okay, there's Brady. Another game, he kind of cost his team a little bit, turned the ball over a little bit. Didn't seem like the right Brady. Second half of the year, really got going. Did have some games here and there, but really got going. You know, the old Brady feels like he's back, especially down the stretch of the year, making those big. Still got the deep ball, making those big time throws, getting you know more chemistry with his team, getting you know smarter, smoother, better passer. Uh, and he can actually escape pressure. And that's, you know, obviously not because of his athleticism, but just because of his knowledge and his footwork. Uh, we saw more and more of that. You know, so he goes from 11 to 6. I do think, you know, maybe maybe why he's not in the top five, he did have some of those games where he really hurt his team, um, you know, production-wise. And, you know, the big playability and the wild plays, you know, says top five. But he still had some of those games that, 
you know, maybe just kept them out, you know, where he kind of hurt his team a little bit. Uh, now we're on to the big five here. Uh, and Russell Wilson comes in at five. He was at number two, you know, the last time around. So we know he kind of dropped down quite a bit. Really, if you if he played the way he did in the second half of the season, the whole way, he wouldn't be on this page. That's for sure. He, he would be he would be lower. You know, he he. He might be outside the top ten. You know, he you know it's not he didn't play bad. Outside the top ten doesn't mean bad. Uh, he didn't play good though, really. You know, uh, uh, for some reason he was taking a, a lot of sacks. People blame the offense line. The offense line isn't good, but if you watch a lot, a lot of those sacks were on him holding the ball, not seeing him, not feeling him, uh, not getting the ball away when he could. Um, you know, not as you know a lot less big time throws, a lot less accurate than he usually is. So I don't know what happened. The first half of the year was a. Uh, ridiculous, ridiculous performance. So that's holding up in the top five still. Deshaun Watson boosted up. His team didn't make the playoffs, not even close. So that's a little unfortunate, but he definitely played his part. He's going from 10 to 4. Uh, one of the more accurate throwers you know, in the game, one of the more big playability throwers in the game, throwing on the run. Um, you know, puts his team in position to win and he can make make the plays with his legs. You know, it's almost like he should do that more, but doesn't really need to because he's playing like one of the best quarterbacks in football. So he goes 10 to 4. Patrick Mahomes was number one, uh, and he goes to three. Uh, for the record, uh, I mean, so we're clear, uh, this is based on a 2020 regular season. You can debate he was one. The top three are that good. They're that close. Uh, if we're talking in general, I think Patrick Mahomes is the best player in all of football. That's me. Uh, but he's at three for 20, the 2020 season. Um, he didn't play the last game of the year, so maybe that affected a little bit. Uh, either they kind of tried not to show some things. They got kind of creative, did some weird things. That kind of hurt him a little bit. Uh, but you see his ability to make the big time plays, make the ridiculous plays, read defenses. You know, you know, you know. In general, I think he's the best player in football. I think I'm gonna, you know, I know I'm gonna put him at three on the year. Josh Allen goes from four to two. Uh, Josh Allen really just boosted this Bills team uh, for the second half of the year. Why they're the hottest team in football, debatably, I suppose. Uh, you know, making plays on the ground, making plays, you know, through the air, uh, taking that next step, reading defenses, taking that next step. You know, just. Um, Making, I think making defenses change their game because how good he is. So about the Bills, they have a wide variety of plays in their playbook. It's a wide open playbook, I like to call it. And that's because of Josh Allen's skill set. Um, they had really no running game as well. He was the running game, uh, and teams just game plan for the pass. You know, game plan for him and the digs and, he's, and digs, and he's still able to do what he does. So I think all of that, you know. I think that's what puts him at two, and that those things could argue him for the MVP. I saw Aaron Rodgers what was slightly better. I guess these top three guys were in the same range. Aaron Rodgers was number three last time we did this video. He's number one now. Um, and, I mean, for the obvious reasons, the production's there, the touchdown machine, making sure his team gets in the end zone at the end of the day. Points is what matters there. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, just I mean, it's what we normally see from Rodgers. He had the knowledge last year, but for some reason last year um, – it felt like his arm talent's better this year than it was last year. He threw a lot of balls away, didn't give some plays a chance last year. For some reason, it was kind of odd, and he was still good, obviously. Made it to the NFC Championship game. Uh, but it just felt like he took that next step. It's kind of weird to say with Aaron Rodgers, you know, Hall of Famer guy, maybe towards the end of his career, um, being able to do that. But, um, yeah, you know, I appreciate quarterbacks that uh, recognize defense and, you know, can change plays for the better, and that's kind of Aaron Rodgers. You know, is there anybody better than Aaron Rodgers at that, you know, making the adjustments proper, just basically running the show? A lot of quarterbacks able to do that, getting better. The young quarterbacks getting better, probably better than maybe Rodgers. No, maybe not Rodgers, but some quarterbacks were at that stage of their careers, like guys like Mahomes and Allen. You know, they're that good that early. It's, fa it's fantastic, but I think Rodgers leads the way in Pretty much every category. I know Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, some of them, Josh Allen could run better than him, so maybe maybe not that category. But, uh, yeah. yeah, for all those reasons, that's why Aaron Rodgers is number one. But like I said, you can make debates for Allen, make debates for Mahomes. I think those three are in the category of them own, their, their own. Uh, if Watson had uh, as good of a team as those guys, he could be number one. He really could be. So maybe you can throw him in there. But uh, those are my 32 quarterbacks based on the year. I'm sure people will let me have in the comments, but it's all for fun. Uh, again, this is based on this year alone. Uh, you know, people here, here's the thing, you know, people, I mean, they have the right to be upset if the, some player, you know, isn't ranked as high, their favorite player, the quarter, here's something to keep in mind. And I always want to tell people, uh, in player rankings, did you watch this other quarterback as much as your quarterback? That's the thing. You know, you watch every snap of your quarterback. You, I'm sure you watch a good amount of other quarterback. Did you watch as much? So that's why, you know, people got to keep that in mind. 
you know, did you watch all these guys evenly? So you can't, I don't know if you really could say this guy needs to be, has to be out of this guy. Uh, be, you know, did you watch him just as much, you know? Uh, and it's all opinion based as well. So somebody's probably going to have slightly different rankings and that's 100% fine, obviously. Uh, but we have a top 100 we do every year, but I do that actually after the playoffs. I, I let uh, playoffs play a factor. So every season and playoffs play a factor in my top 100. That's just how I do it. So can't wait to do that. We do it every year. We got a bunch of off-season videos on the way. Some are already up, but more on the way. So we're in playoff mode. We're in off-season free agency slash draft mode at the same time. So a lot going on here at the Goat House. Please smash that like button, subscribe, turn notifications on. I'll be much appreciated. Make sure you follow that Twitter, keeping you guys involved and always talking about football when breaking news hits and talking during live games. Check it out. Be much appreciated as well. That's going to do it for this one though. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.